Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and finished the shower room puzzle. You know, we had a few hiccups there with, uh, you know, June of course panicking and, you know, Snake's dead body being there. And, you know, we left a lot of people behind in a previous episode, but I'm sure everything will work out in the end. Outside of the shower room was a hallway that extended off to the left and right. At the right end was a large door. They moved a few steps toward the door when Junpei heard the sound of metal on metal. They turned around. Seven was doing something to the door of the shower room. What are you doing, Seven? Well, I figure maybe we might want to come back here sometime. So I stuck the broom in there to keep the door from shutting. Alright, let's go. With that, he stood up and began walking down the hallway. He brushed past Junpei and kept going. After a moment, the rest of them followed him. Before long, they found themselves at the large iron door. They had only been there for a moment when June spoke up. Jumpy, look! He turned. There on the right side of the hallway was a piece of paper attached to the wall. Junpei ran over and peeled it off. It's a map of the ship's interior. It said Sea Deck on the upper left corner. From what he could tell, it was a map of the floor they were on. There would be time to look at it later. Junpei folded the map and stuffed it into his pocket. Back at the door, the four of them lined up in front of it. Santa stepped forward. He grabbed a hold of the door and then turned to look back at the rest of them. Ready? I'm gonna open it. They nodded. Santa nodded back and threw the door open. All four of them leapt through. It only took a moment for them to realize where they were. They had been there only a short time ago. It was the large hospital room filled with countless beds. Lotus and Clover looked up as they entered. Ace was there as well, although he looked as though he had only just woken up. The moment they spotted Junpei, Lotus and Clover headed straight for him. As she neared him, Lotus drew back her hand and slapped him, open-palmed across the face. How could you do this to us? Her face was furious. She grabbed Junpei by the collar and shook him violently. Clover didn't touch him, but the hate in her eyes was no less potent. It was Seven who stopped them. Knock it off! We got bigger shit to worry about right now. His deep voice echoed across the massive room. Lotus glared at Seven, but let Junpei go after one last vicious shake. What? Go have a look. Um, I stuck the screwdriver in the door. That door over there, the one without a number. So long as the screwdriver's there, it can't shut. So you can get in there. Seven also explained how they might find the shower room and how he'd use the broom to ensure that the door remained open as well. Then you're saying we can go in there without passing through the numbered door? Yeah, that's about the size of it. What the hell is in there? You'll know when you see it. Lotus and Clover looked at one another for a moment, then nodded and stepped through the door. By then, Ace had made his way to them, moving with the stiff, shuffling steps of someone who has only just awoken from a lengthy slumber. My goodness. I know I said I was sure you'd come back for me. I didn't think it would happen so soon, though. He shook his head weakly. Should I go as well? Seven nodded. Very well. Ace followed Lotus and Clover with his stiff, tired gait. I do like the sort of atmosphere that's built here. Now Clover uh, knows about Snake's death. We're moving past all that. Uh, and we're just getting up to the next number of doors that we're going to be going through. Although there is an interesting thing that you will notice here. Uh, as we're coming up to this. I'll just be as nice as possible. There's really no winning in that situation, because either you call Clover crazy, which is the absolute worst thing you can do to someone who just lost her brother, or you can 
you know, start doubting everyone and have the entire rest of the people against you and think you're an idiot. They stood in front of the elevators next to the stairs that led to the casino and the kitchen. Between the two elevators was a card reader with the mercury symbol engraved on it. Junpei stood in front of it with the mercury keycard. He found the card while investigating the shower room. He took a deep breath and slid the card through the reader. He made a small, it made a small beep and the lights on the reader blinked to life. Now they were ready. Seven people, including Junpei, climbed onto the elevator. There were only two floor buttons they could push, the C and bottom buttons. The rest were destroyed or did nothing when pushed. Junpei hit the bottom button. The door closed. Slowly they began to move downward. Sometime later, all seven of them stepped off the elevator and onto the bottom deck. They stepped off and saw that the hallway to the right ended somewhere between 20 and 25 feet from them. The hallway in front of them was a dead end, but not a regular dead end. This is a numbered door! Yeah, it's door two. Immediately, they began to discuss who would go through it. Their earlier experiences had shown them that they would meet again regardless of which number doors they took. As a result, there were no arguments this time. Instead, they concerned themselves with who would be sent to investigate what was beyond the door. The first volunteer was Seven. Junpei followed suit, which meant that Lotus was, by default, the third member. 5 plus 7 plus 8 equals 20, 2 plus 0 equals 2. So, interesting thing here is that since we didn't go through the 7 and 8 doors and get the keys and key cards from there, we don't actually get a choice for the third uh, s set of doors because we only know about, we're only, we only have access to the 2 door. So you're actually, if you go through the 3 door, you are forced to go through the 2 door. Alright, we're taking off. Okay, please be careful. Jesus, you two are acting like you're married, you know that? Jun blushed. So did Junpei. Perhaps in an attempt to hide his emotions, he quickly turned away to pull the lever on the red. The door opened. As they'd come to expect, there appeared to be a short hallway on the other side. Alright, let's go. Lotus was the first through the door. Seven was next, and Junpei brought up the rear. Fortunately, it took them only moments to find the dead. It had been placed just inside the room, right next to the numbered door. They gathered around it and quickly scanned each of their bracelets. It stopped. Yeah, it stopped. Junpei could feel his heart pounding against the inside of his ribs. Seven and Lotus were breathing hard and fast. It was the third time they'd been through the process, but they'd yet to grow accustomed to it. Not that Junpei wanted to. He planned to finish the game before he had got a chance to let imminent death become a commonplace. Junpei looked around again. It was a short hallway with five doors along the walls. There were three doors along the left wall. And a single one on the right. At the end of the hallway, the fifth door was covered by a thick metal plate. Junpei didn't think he'd be able to open it. After taking a look around the room himself, Seven spoke. Alright, let's get started. I think we'd probably better split up. You two okay with that? Yes, no problem. Sure thing. Seven nodded to them and stepped into the room closest to him. Lotus looked at the doors for a moment then headed for the one in the center. At last, Junpei was left alone. Well, guess I'd better get started too looked intently at the remaining three doors. So this route is a lot quicker paced than the previous ones, because we'd have it we'd usually have at least an episode between the three, seven, and eight doors and the one, two, and six doors, but we're just immediately into this. So we're gonna make our way through the first door. And we're going to go ahead and look at this stall right here. We want to go ahead and first pull on the flusher right here. 
and this handle's pretty loose. Loose? You think it'll come off if you pull it pull on it? It fell off. Huh. Look at this. That handle doesn't really fit off fit on the string. Maybe it wasn't meant to be attached to it. Handle. Take a look at this handle. The inside of the hole's threaded, like you're supposed to screw something in there. We seen anything that might fit in there? Looks like some screw something screws into this handle. Uh, we'll actually find the thing that screws into this handle just a short bit away. A toilet paper tube, huh? Seriously, Dad, I'm gonna need this for anything. Well, this part is thinner than the rest. In fact, this doesn't really look like it's a part of the rest of the thing. This rod feels loose. Maybe if I give it a couple of turns. Here we go. Get the screwdriver shaft. Hey, this is a screwdriver shaft. It's missing a handle, though. Even if we run into the screws, it fits. We're gonna have a hard time of it without a handle. Well, if we can find a handle, maybe then it'll do us some good. Rod from the Phillips head screwdriver. The other end of it is threaded. Of course, you put two and two together, you take the screwdriver handle, you take the shaft, put it in. So if I just stick this metal rod into the handle, we get a screwdriver. Thank God it's the right kind of screwdriver for the screw. Awesome. We can totally use this. Damn, this screwdriver looks like a, sco a, sol a soldier in iron. You think it's some kind of industrial grade screwdriver? Guess that doesn't really matter. Anyway, so long as we got this thing, we can unscrew any Phillips screws we run into. Phillips said screwdriver with a long rod. Should deal with any Phillips screw we run into. So back, we want to go ahead and uh, lift up the toilet seat and we see a sun. A symbol on the toilet, huh? Seems a little fishy to me. The sun symbol, but it doesn't look like the ones on the doors. So we move back, I actually want to turn around here and look at this. This thing's really simple. Is it really a desk? Well, of course it's gonna be simple. Simple. I mean, it's probably like that so we don't try and use it as part of the puzzle, right? We probably use a desk to write letters to your family or something, but this is a boat. I'll bet the only thing they used this for was eaten off of. Go ahead and look at these screws right here. It's a really simple desk, there's only one drawer in it. Uh, what the hell? It's not opening. There's something up with the drawer. I don't trust it. Can I click it now? There we go. You have to actually click on the drawer before you click on the screws. I guess that makes sense. Sweet, got the screws off. Now we can open the drawer. There we go. There's nothing in here. Well, maybe the drawer is what we need. The drawer, huh? All right, let's yank this thing out. If we look at it. On the back, we have these uh, little things right here. There's a bump on the back. I wonder what it's for. Hmm, maybe there's a hole somewhere and these bumps line up with it and triggering a hidden switch or something. Hey, we've seen weirder stuff. Doesn't seem that far-fetched. The drawer has a weird bump on the back of it. Maybe there's some kind of switch somewhere that these bumps fit. Seems a little far-fetched though. We've gotten a lot out of this uh, room right here. Second room over. Uh, first thing that we want to pick up, we look at this bed, this towel right here. Well, it looks like a towel. I have to wonder if the design means anything, though. Maybe you should consider what the design might be. Perhaps that'll give us a hint. This towel has a weird design on it. What could it mean? What does the design look like? It looks like water to me. I don't think there's actually any use for this towel. Uh, it's just here in our inventory just to give us a hint of water. Anyway, we want to go ahead and look in here, and if we look at this toilet, we have a moon symbol. A moon? What a filthy, disgusting moon. Yeah, it's pretty filthy, but it's a precious hint. Let's remember it, alright? Uh, moving back, we have another desk with another drawer. There's nothing in the drawer. Yeah, something's not right, though. The handle on the drawer doesn't really fit, you know? It just looks messy. Why don't you take it out? So there's a lot to this drawer. First of all, it has the weird handle, but second of all, it has a mirror on the bottom side. So there's a mirror on the other side of this drawer. Hmm, interesting. It's kind of odd. It's kind of an odd shape. It looks like something someone attached the handle with a screw, screw after the fact. 
There's a mirror on the back of this drawer, and the handle is weird. It looks like the handle was attached with a screw. Well, you know what that means. Combine. If I use the screwdriver on the screw on the center of the handle, maybe I can... There we go. Well, that came off easily. It looks like a faucet handle. Yeah, it seemed like a little... It seemed a little weird to put it on a wooden drawer like this. I'm sure they made it look odd on purpose. With a shape like that, there's only one place it could go. It sure looks like this handle goes to the faucet. If you take the handle off, it's just a big mirror. Usually you'd use a mirror to reflect something, but I can't see how that would help us here. Well, uh, what else can I do with it? Well, it'd be really pretty if we shatter it. There's a mirror on the back of this drawer. All I can do with it is reflect stuff. So we want to go ahead and take this knob, put it on the faucet, like was suggested earlier. Sweet. The handle I got off that drawer fits onto the faucet perfectly. Now I can turn the water on. Junpei, what are you doing? It's pretty obvious, isn't it? I'm running the water. I can see that. I'm asking you why you're just letting it run like that. Think about it, Lotus. This faucet didn't have a knob when he found it, right? What do you mean? Just watch. Any time now. Hey! Water's filling up! Doesn't that just mean the pipes are clogged? Whoops, let's turn that off for now. So, did anything change? The water stopped flowing. Thank you, Mr. Obvious! Ugh, Junpei, I'm leaving this one to you, alright? I really like that interaction. Uh, that actually does change something, though. Uh, we have this sort of, uh river right here and we have this poster or the towel rather uh that shows that the water has sort of stopped in this one area if we head over here we have a poster of that stopped water uh just on its own and in the sink here we now have a tile with a 14 on it as well as an x i'm not sure what the x means though uh so we got this tile and it's got these red, blue, and gray lines. What the heck does that stuff mean? Hell if I know. Take a look at this dial here. See if you look real close, the three red lines on, are on top of each other. The red lines? Yeah. Hmm. A dial with three lines in it, huh? Hey Junpei, I was thinking. The red line on top. Doesn't it look like a 14? 14, huh? Yeah, I guess that kinda, it kinda does. Red lines on the tile look like they make a 14, so we'll just keep that in mind for later. And Junpei put the wet tile into his pocket. He was about to turn away when there was a noise behind him. He spun around to see Seven kneeling on the floor. His face was rigid and pale. Droplets of sweat covered his forehead. Hey, hey what's going on? You okay, man? He was concerned. He'd never seen Seven like this before. Slowly, the other man lifted himself to his feet on shaky legs. Yeah, I'm fine. I just got a little dizzy, that's all. His face was pale, and his breathing was heavy. So I was pouring off his face and staining his shirt. He was many things, but fine was not one of them. You sure? You don't look so good. Seven didn't answer. Half of his face was twisted, as if distorted by extreme pain, and his eyes were glazed. Finally, he spoke. What am... What am I doing here? Hmm? His words made no sense. What are you talking about? We opened the number two door and walked in here. Don't tell me you forgot. N no, no, that's that's not what I mean. He shook his head several times as if trying to clear something from it. It, it ain't much, but uh, I think some of my memories came back. I... 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 I think I've been here before. Huh? I said I've been in this room before. You were here? When? Why? Owie. Light. Noda. Suddenly Seven was mumbling to himself. There were words Junpei didn't understand. Seven's hoarse voice trailed off and Junpei couldn't make out what he said. What the hell was that? Seven's brow furrowed furiously, and he ground his teeth back and forth. It's... it's right there. I feel like I'm this close to remembering everything, but I just can't. 
Seven stopped, frustrated. He pulled his hat off and ran a hand through his hair. Then, suddenly, he looked up, his eyes wide. That's right! An experiment! There was some kind of experiment going on on this ship! An experiment? What sort of experiment? They were... They were trying to control people! Or... Or something like that. Junpei didn't know what to make of Seven's story. Instead, he simply stared at Seven as Seven continued. Owie, Light, Nona. Those were their names. Well, some of them. The kids that were there in the uh, experiment, I mean. I think there were four or five more, but I, I don't remember all their names. Yeah, that's right. That's why I'm here. Seven began to mumble to himself and wander aimlessly about the room. He looked confused. So far as Junpei could tell, the man was simply rambling and there were odd twitches to his movements. Experiment. Gradle Pharmaceutical. Those kidnapped kids. Was I working that case? Seven continued to mumble to himself about things that meant nothing to Junpei. Junpei didn't have any answers for him, of course. He couldn't understand what was happening to Seven. All he could do was wait. After a few minutes, Seven finally stopped. He crouched down and looked under the bed. His face registered mild surprise and he began to mumble to himself again. The hole's gone? No, maybe it was a different room. There's gotta be a ton of rooms on this boat to look just like this one. At last, Junpei could contain himself no longer. Hey, uh, what exactly do you remember? Well, maybe you could stop talking like a crazy person and tell me what's going on here? Seven stood up slowly. Well, it's not like I really remember everything. I've only got bits and pieces and they're scattered and don't make much sense. I don't care. Tell me the bits and pieces then. Jun Junpei could feel it. Whatever Seven had remembered, it was important. Very important. Seven drew a large, muscled hand down across his face. As he wiped the sweat from his brow, he spoke. From what I can remember, I think I was... a cop. A cop? Yeah. I was looking for that group of kids that got kidnapped nine years ago. You remember that, right? It was all over the news. Y yeah I was still in school. I don't remember all the details, but I, I do remember some of it. I think it was a bunch of kids right around my age. They all just disappeared. Nobody knew why. It's all over TV and newspapers every day. So you're saying you were investigating it? Yeah, that's what it looks like. And I guess I found something. There was this metal company, medical company called Cradle Pharmaceutical that had something to do with those kids. After I figured that out, I managed to get some information out of somebody who worked for them. They told me a ship would be leaving that night, with all of the kids on it. They were going to be taken to some kind of big passenger ship somewhere out in the ocean. And so, Seven had headed to the wharf. He kept to the shadows and before long found the suspicious ship he'd been looking for. There were a number of human shapes moving near the ship. There were men in black suits. Many of them were carrying large bags onto the ship. The bags. There was something about the way they moved as they were carried. There could be no mistake. There were human beings in those bags. He'd moved before he even realized what he was going to. That he was going to. Out of the shadows he came, his gun already in his hand. He heard the words don't move, but they weren't his. He felt metal touch the back of his head. Drop your gun, came the cold voice from behind him. With the words, he felt the cold metal thing behind him press against his skull. Slowly, Seven crouched down and laid his gun on the ground. Then suddenly, he felt a sharp pain in his neck. A needle. Was it some sort of drug? As he was thinking about that, Seven felt his face at the cold concrete beneath him. He could feel the chill of it seeping into him. Ugh, damn it. Shit, my head hurts. Seven woke to find himself lying on a hard floor. He twisted his neck to peer around the room. Where am I? There's a small shabby bed and a dirty sink. A toilet with no stall or privacy of any sort. As a cop, it was a place Seven had seen all too often. I'm in a cell, huh? Opposite the toilet was a door set into the wall. 
Seven struggled to his feet and hobbled toward it. He gave the door a good shove, then another, then tried pulling it. It didn't open. Well, that was about what he'd expected. It wasn't likely that someone would put him in a cell only to leave it unlocked. He threw himself against the door a few times, but to no avail. I knew it. Seven grumbled to himself as he moved back toward the bed. He sat down. He sat there for a very long time, just how long he wasn't sure. At last he began to nod off and had nearly fallen asleep when he was roused by a distant voice. There it is, over the- It's the nine- The voice was far away, very far away. Seven couldn't understand what it was saying. Nonetheless, it was a voice, and a high one, most likely a child. His eyes shot open. Her- Over there. Okay, thing. As he listened, he could pick out several dis different distinct voices. There were at least five or six, possibly more. Where were the voices coming from? He looked around the room frantically. Perhaps the door? No, that wasn't it. What are we going to do now? Was it coming from the left? Was it coming from under the bed? He grabbed the bed and flipped it up with ease. There it was. There was a hole for ventilation in the wall where the bed had been, covered with a metal grate. Seven lay down on his stomach and pe peered through the grate. He couldn't see anything. It was too dark. Now that he'd found it, however, there could be no doubt. This was the source of the voices. From, for a moment, he was confused. Why were the children nearby? Then he remembered what the man from Cradle Pharmaceutical had told him. How a ship would take the kidnapped children from the wharf to a waiting passenger liner out in the ocean. Was Seven on that passenger liner? It didn't matter. What mattered was that he had to find a way to the children. Seven looked at the metal grate. Could he fit through that hole? He stuck his fingers through the grate and grabbed hold of it. Yeah, how'd you like that, you son of a bitch? The dark square sat open before him. Seven wiped the sweat from his forehead and crawled inside. Junpei waited for Seven to resume his story. The longer he waited, however, the clearer it became that Seven had no intention of doing so. He'd gone silent and simply stared off into the air, his eyes blank. Hey, what happened after that? He'd waited long enough, but Seven shook his head. I don't... I don't remember what happens after that. I think I found some kind of door out of the duct. And I think I found some kids too. Oh man, why can't I remember what happened next? Oh man, what happened to the kids, Seven? Did you save them? I don't know. I don't know if it was me. I just... I've got this feeling. I think one of the kids died. A girl, I think. Huh? Deep in his heart, Junpei felt something very cold. Seven's head dropped, and Junpei saw in it a look of sadness the likes of which he had never seen on the man before. The large man's eyes blinked rapidly, as if he were fighting back tears, and he swallowed hard. <sighs> His sigh was like the melancholy setting of an old abandoned building. He shook his head and spoke. Anyway, just please don't ask me anymore, okay? I really don't want to remember ev anything else. After that, Jim could hardly try to force any answers out of the other man. There was nothing more he could do. Instead, Junpei turned his mind to trying to make sense of what Seven had told him. The children who have been kidnapped nine years before. Apparently a company called Cradle Pharmaceutical had been behind the kidnappings and had taken the children to the ship they were on now. They had been brought up they had been brought to the ship for an experiment. Something to do with controlling human beings, Sep Seven had said. 
The 16 children who had been kidnapped were the subjects for the experiment. Seven had said three of their names were Owie, Light, and Nona. That was the new information. He'd also learned that Seven was, or had been, a police officer. Still, there was little he could do with this information. He'd learned nothing about the Nonary game or Zero. He had no idea why they had been brought to the ship that had been the site of those experiments nine years ago. Junpei couldn't forget what Seven had said. The purpose of the experiment had been to control human beings. Could such an absurd experiment really have been conducted? Before long, Junpei realized that he had spent quite some time deep in thought. No time for that, he tried it himself. He had work to do. Junpei shook his head quickly to clear it and returned to the investigation, thoughts swirling in his mind. Ah, right, we actually have an escape room to do. Very immersive story that he was telling. Uh, it is awesome that we get to see more of Seven's backstory when going through here. Anyways, we have some light here. Uh, speaking of which, uh, we just heard that one of the kids in the experiment was named Light, and we're doing a puzzle with light in it. As in, you know, the actual thing that goes into your eyes. Oh yeah, we could probably use this mirror to reflect the light. Now I just gotta figure out where to reflect this light. Maybe if I go somewhere that's a little easier to shine light on. And you can point the light to different points. So if you point the light over here, and I shine the light on the mirror in the back, we get the numbers 4 and 7. Is that a number? So if I shine the light on this mirror, then I get to see some numbers. I can see a 4 on the left and a 7 on the right. 4 and 7. Shine to the right. So if I shine this light on the mirror in the back, I get it. If I shine the light on the mirror, a symbol appears. The left has a sun and the right one's a moon symbol. I'm gonna remember this. So 4 sun and 7 moon. Uh, if you'll remember, we saw the sun and moon symbols on the toilets over here. So if we go ahead and pull on these uh, flushers right here, the only thing you can manipulate in this room is that string. Chances are they made this puzzle so someone wouldn't trigger it by accident. Guess I should just keep pulling on this thing then. Right here goes. Second pull. Third pull. Did you hear something? I did. But it doesn't look like anything's happened to you. Huh, wonder what that sound was. So now, we want to go to where the moon symbol was and pull seven times. So this is what the moon symbol is pointing to, huh? It probably made it so that someone wouldn't try to trigger it by accident. If that's the case, second time. And a third time. Fourth time. Fifth time. Sixth time. This is the sixth consecutive time. There's that sound again. It happens whenever I pull that string a couple of times. Junpei, did you hear something from the other room? The other room. You mean from the dark room? Heading back to the dark room, we can go ahead and just walk on in. Nothing seems to have changed, but if we head over to the desk and open it up, well, this drawer opens easily enough. If we'd come in here before and tried to open it, we wouldn't have gotten anything. The red lines on the tile look like they make a 14, and I assume the same thing will be said about this one. Yes, indeedy. So, I'll just keep that in mind for later. Uh, if, I, if we ever run into identical items, they'll pretty much have the same description when you search them. So, go ahead and go into our items. We have two drawers right here. We take this one, which has the little bumps in the back, and we go ahead and move over to Lotus's room. Slide it in here. It sounded like something falling. What was that? I heard it too. Let's open the drawer. The tile. Red lines, okay, I already read that line. So once you have these four tiles of the number 14, you'll, we want to come over here to this door that says emergence. Okay, well it looks like we 
We've investigated all the rooms. The only mystery left is that door. Alright, let's crack that mystery then. We got four tiles, and there are a bunch of tiles that are the same size upon the wall here. So if we replace four of the tiles on the wall with the ones we've got, that should open the door. Well, there's only one way to find out. Indeed there is. Now, one thing that you'll notice is that you'll see the E here uh, shows up four times. One, two, three, four. Same amount as the number of tiles we got. And what's E in uh, hexadecimal? 14, that's right. So go ahead and swap out the 14s with the E's. And there we go. Hey, did you hear something unlock? Does that mean we got it right? Yes, it looks like we did. The 14 hidden on the tile. If you convert that to hexadecimal, it's an E. Basically, the E's in emergence are the 14s from the tile. So if we replace it, that gives up the answer. Do you really care why it worked? Let's just get out of here. Yes, let's go! They passed through the open door and headed to the next room. Junpei jogged down the short staircase and looked around. What the hell is this place? The words had sprung unbidden to his lips, but it was clear why. Junpei shivered. Lotus and Seven reached the bottom of the stairs and stopped short, terrified. This room is really creepy. I think we ought to get the hell out of here. Now! He jogged up to the stairs on the opposite side of the room and shook the door on the wall next to the catwalk. It didn't open, and he muttered to himself. Figures. It's locked, isn't it? Yep. Don't know why I thought this one would be any different. Junpei looked around the room again. In the center of it was a chair. The back of it was covered with electrodes connected to a nest of wires. Beneath it was a strange glass panel. Junpei wasn't sure what it was for, but it made him uncomfortable. Whatever might have been beyond the glass, Junpei couldn't tell. It was too dark. Junpei turned to look at the right side of the room. There was a table covered with a piece of cloth. Parts of the cloth were stained with something that looked suspiciously like blood. On top of the table were a number of metal instruments. Junpei didn't know what they were for, and he had a feeling he didn't want to find out. His mind began to imagine what could have taken place in that dark, cold room. The things he imagined were not pleasant. Junpei shook his head in an attempt to clear it, and tried to focus on something else. Anyway, we don't- Anyway. We don't want to stay here any longer than we got to. Let's figure out this puzzle and get the hell out of here. Come on! And this is where we're going to leave off this episode. I know typically I end off after we get the seek away out text, but I forgot to do that this time around. So we're ending off here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!